Hello, everyone. Here we are today again with uh, a new edition of Unlocked, um, our live stream that is discussing how technology might shape a better future. With me today as my co-moderator is Marco Preuss. Hello, Marco. Hello. Um, Marco is a cybersecurity researcher, or as I said, he hunts, uh, as, as the screen says, he hunts for malware. And um, we are today live at Tomorrow Unlocked. We are live at uh, Kaspersky's YouTube uh, channel, and we are live at the World Ethical Data Forum. Um, welcome everybody who is with us uh, on all these channels today. Um, little introduction, Tomorrow Unlocked is a documentary channel by Kaspersky. We are uh, making films mainly about, again, how technology creates a better future. Um, we will not be taking questions while we are talking, but at the end, I will try to have a look at the chat. And if you want to leave any questions there that you want to address to any of our guests or in general to us, um, feel free to do so. We are today talking about human augmentation and human augmentation is, uh, well, obviously a fascinating topic and an old topic, as uh, someone said in one of our films, um, the spear or a shovel are um, augmented hands and in a way that is right. So we've been augmenting for a long time. But today human augmentation maybe has a uh, different and a good number um, of um, facets. And we could say it goes into two, two directions. One is restoring physical functions um, that to minimize the impact of impairments of the body. That would be uh, one direction. The other one would be making the body do things that the body theoretically couldn't do. And in a way, I think these two streams are also coming together. And we have uh, two guests today um, with us. And uh, one of those guests is Tilly Loki and one is Wojtek Paprota and we will introduce them in a second but before um, let's give you a bit of an idea of how we are seeing uh, human augmentations with a small intro video are we heading into an optimistic future or a dangerous place we as human can develop a sixth sense uh, in just a blink of an eye. Be making a step change to the next level. My brain goes into my legs and my brain goes into my whole body. For the last few decades, we've been gaining about three months of lifespan per year. It's still sort of an optimization. Everyone optimizes. Since humans exist, they augmented themselves. We might not even yet fully be able to imagine all the positive new things. It's what makes us humans special, that we are uh, we are capable of developing ourselves and simply enhancing our lives in a very radical manner. And we're back and we lost Wojtek for a second, but he came back right in time uh, for um, for us coming back. Marco, would you like to introduce yeah. your first guest, Tilly? <laughs> yeah, as mentioned, we have uh, two very special guests today in this episode. Uh, one is Tilly. Um, I'm very happy that, he uh, that she joined us in this uh, episode. Tilly Locke, she was diagnosed with a very complex uh, infection when she was like 50 months old. And she lost both hands. Uh, due to that and um, her mom back then promised her she would get them back. Um, Tilly then uh, since then has been relying on first myoelectric arms uh, for quite a long time and since about uh, 2016 uh, she's wearing arms, bionic arms from Open Bionics. And in 2019, she received arms from, um, it's like a, 
a setting or or framed by this uh, Alita Battle Angel. There were some uh, people from that involved, and um, yeah, she's uh, fifteen years old and one of the most impactful uh, bionic influencers around. So I'm very happy uh, about her joining us. Welcome, Tilly. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. And our second guest today is Wojtek Pabrota. Um, Wojtek calls himself a transhumanism believer, and I'm uh, confident that he will explain later what that means. He founded a company called Walletmore last year, and what Walletmore does is um, it gives you gives its customers a solution uh, to implant payment chips into their hand. Uh, well, you could basically implant it everywhere in your body. Um, so imagine it like you'd be paying with your contactless credit uh, credit card and touch it uh, to the reader, but you have no credit card in your hand, so you're just using the hand. That is pretty cool. Um, and uh, we're very happy to have Wojtek here today. Hello, Wojtek. Hello. Thanks for having me as well. That's exactly how it's going. Yeah, super. Um, I myself had a chip implanted a few years ago uh, in my left hand. It's uh, somewhere in this area. And uh, used it as a key to the office uh, for many years. Currently, I'm in home office, so I can't really use it as key to the office. But um, something that always happens to me since then, when someone hears I have a chip implanted, they would be like, ooh, may we call you a cyborg now? To which I obviously would say I think that is a bit a big word for having a chip implanted in the hand. But I would assume you both get that question uh, too. So giving that question over to you, in a bit of a different version. If someone called you a cyborg, would it be an honor or an insult or simply neutral for you, Tilly? Well, people people don't really ask me, oh, can we call you a cyborg now? Instead, I just get called cyborg all the time. To be honest, I, I don't take offense to it at all. I know a lot of people do. When I first met the company who make these bionic arms down at their lab, their first ever lab, they moved out I think three times now, but in the original lab, uh, when I first put my first Bionicom on, um, the co-founder, Sammy, Samantha Payne, she said to me, Tilly, you know, just to let you know, now you've got these Bionicoms, you're going to hear a lot of people call you a cyborg. And it was a word that I'd never heard before, but she just wanted to say, yeah, I just wanted to tell you, like, it's not an insult. It's like, it's not something that you're supposed to take offense to. It's not a negative thing so that's how i was kind of introduced to the word but that wasn't just her making the opinion for me and telling me yeah you don't need to be upset about that i had like later done my own research on it and i understand that some people look at it as like a threat if they don't want to be classed as a cyborg because they don't think of themselves as a threat and that's what a lot of people associate that with especially in like the whole sci-fi area of things but for me I just think I feel like cyborg is a pretty cool thing. I've never took offense to it. If anything, like I quite enjoy being labeled as a cyborg. I, I don't think I'm a threat. I take it all very, very lightheartedly. But yeah, I just, I don't take offense for it. It's just the norm nowadays, which is quite cool. A bit strange, but still quite cool. And I don't have a negative feeling towards it. Wojtek, do you think, do you consider yourself a cyborg? And do you take offense if someone calls you? Cyborg. Uh, I never take it offensive. Uh, I would say that cyborg is a bit too big word because, of course, Tilly uh, has much more to do with cyborg than, than myself because I just have a couple of implants in my in my hand uh, and all I can do is uh, make payments with that. And I'm sure if we wanted, we would easily also implant it uh, in the Tilly's hand. However, uh, in, in terms of my involvement in the whole uh, industry and uh, what Walletmore is doing, I don't believe that uh, cyborg is uh, the, the best uh, the best uh, description of that. Uh, however, there are some people who uh, call me cyborg because in the end of the day, I have a piece of technology that is merged with my body, so technically it would be possible to call me cyborg. Uh, however, uh, I believe that uh, in terms of the ultimate goal of 
uh, enhancing our bodies and our lives with the humongous amount of technologies that are around, which Tilly is a great example of, uh, there's still a long way forward uh, to the ultimate cyborg. So do you think a cyborg would just need much more tech? Yeah, definitely. I believe uh, my implants is pretty much the first step uh, to, to this description, uh, but a very important step, of course. Uh, in my case, it was the first augmentation that I, I had. I uh, never had any other implants, even my teeth. So uh, that was a great step, uh, the first step to, to becoming a cyborg. And uh, in a way, enabling people to uh, to maintain contact, direct contact and direct connection with the technology. In our case, it's just payment terminals, but still it's outer technology. It's artificial technology uh, is this sort of sense for humans to uh, to enhance the day to day day to day tasks. And uh, in a way, we can also call it the sixth sense, of course. Uh, we would need much more uh, facilities and much more features uh, included in our bodies to call it like a full sixth sense. But I believe that's definitely the uh, the great beginning and the great first step. I think that that's exactly the, the interesting point. It's a first step. I mean, uh, Tilly, you were using for quite a long time these standard NHS prosthetics, right? And then at some point, uh, your mother found out about the open bionics. And since then, you were wearing this like more, way more advanced technologies, these way more advanced uh, bionic prosthetics. Um, how did that change your life? Because that that's exactly, I mean, a small um, step in this evolution, what we've seen from like, very low tech to super high tech yeah sure so my first ever prosthetic i got when i was two years old and that was from the nhs basically what this was um it wasn't much effort into like fitting it definitely isn't um an extensive complicated fitting process which these sockets are which are literally designed for each user individually I remember, and I've still got it handy. <laughs> handy, that's a good pun. It's actually not with me right now, as I would have showed you and picked it up. But I do have it in my possession, and it still kind of fits. So that's the odd thing, and that's how you know, like, it, there wasn't. It was that low tech that it wasn't really even the fitting process of uh, an arm that's supposed to replace a hand wasn't taken much care of. I didn't wear this prosthetic very much, to be honest. I thought of it more of a weapon than a hand honestly I remember my very few memories with these arms is like me running around with it pretending to be Captain Hook and like hitting my sisters with it I really didn't do anything practical with it and it wasn't very functional for me so I kind of stopped that pretty early on and it went in the drawer and then I ended up having to go private um, past then so when I went private that's when I had the really really re realistic myoelectric high definition silicone arms which I was having to do a lot of fundraising for which I thank my mom because she played a big part in that as well and it was definitely a step forward obviously the functionality was millions of times better it was advanced technology now and I I pretty much blended into everybody else around me but it it went to a point where it was quite uncanny and it would look so realistic but it would move so robotically and just not very fluent at all so it would actually provoke fear in people and they couldn't understand whether their arm was fake whether it was real it could have been a real hand for the all they knew but it was acting up strangely so that was pretty negative reactions obviously nobody wants to be feared just walking down the street it definitely came with an awful lot of stares and made me pretty uncomfortable then like you say my mom found out about open bionics and she found out about them through an online appeal and they were looking for a child below the elbow amputee to help them basically become a part of the team and develop prosthetics for children and i was looking to get involved they were looking for somebody help i fit all the requirements and everything like that so i just sent them an email and we 
we ended up working together and I've been working with them ever since. Definitely the reactions are so much more positive now. People look at them as really so much cooler. I feel like even though the prosthetics previously were designed to make other people around me feel more comfortable, they actually did quite the opposite. And if I was wearing my previous prosthetic compared to this prosthetic one day or another, you would find so many people come over to like shake my hand with this prosthetic on, whereas the other one, people would kind of avoid it at all costs and kind of direct things to the people around me, not actually to me. So that's definitely something that's interesting. And it's interesting because the whole design process really of previous prosthetics was that they wanted me to blend in to make other people feel comfortable. But actually, these bionic arms doing the complete opposite did a better job at that and succeeded more. And I feel like it was just a misconception that everybody had that people who are amputees who do have a limb difference actually do want prosthetics that look realistic. That is the case in some people's opinions, like maybe some people do want realistic prosthetics, but it was the fact that it was never really even questioned. And in my experience, my confidence has definitely come on leaps and bounds. Now I'm being able to just, yeah, this is my def my difference, but I'm not only able to accept it now, embrace it, but it almost accentuates that difference in a way that, which I think is like, incredibly beautiful and you can do it to express you you can have any color you can have jeweled up hands should you want to i've had some of lights on some of my name on and if anything i kind of think of them as almost like a fashion accessory now and that's something i never thought i would ever say about a prosthetic arm like medical device and high fashion is not something that you would usually put together but i'm really really happy that it's going down that route and it's so clear to see all the excitement that are around it now rather than sympathy and yeah it's definitely helped me and i know so many other people just to know that that difference can be accepted today and yeah that's something that i hope to strive to achieve a lot more i feel like what a lot of us are doing and victoria modesta who was also on the next panel she we're all trying to take away that stigma that disability and medical devices are such an awful thing because they don't have to be that's right that's Let's just stick a bit on this. Um, from your personal feeling, I mean, it seems really like you're into it. You you feel them as like part of yourself. You accepted them, uh, which is, of course, uh, logical for this long period you have them. But um, observing from the people around you, do you feel that you have like no disadvantages or maybe even you have maybe advantages over others around you what what's your personal take on that well i definitely don't think well, i guess i'm i'm at an advantage in some case like i was saying to you earlier if i could go back in time and change what happened to me and not lose my hands my answer that to that would be i wouldn't want to because i'm so happy with where i am now and it's got given me an advantage and the fact that I am I am like unique and I can have a niche market and I have a story which I can tell and I want to tell. So it gives me kind of a, an advantage in that sense and it definitely helps me stand out. However, like functionality wise and like physically, I would say I'm still at a disadvantage. There's still a medical device, they definitely help physically, um, but there's still a lot of improvements that need to be made. And I'm on the company's back, like, constructive criticism all the time as part of the team always saying what I think would be better I feel like eventually it will get to that point where it is an advancement and like you say people will actually want bionicoms instead of their organic limb uh I don't know how far off that will be but it's definitely I think judging of how far technology has come in like literally the last five years I think it's it might be sooner than we're all anticipating but as of now I don't think I'm at a crazy advantage definitely not physically um because there's still a couple of things that I can't do with them but we're working on it sounds can interesting you, maybe you they have just a, a short very short peek on how they're working because that's maybe uh, kind of interesting you've shown that uh, them a bit um <laughs> maybe just just a piece on on their inner working Sure. So these hands and every hero arm is actually all muscle operated. So there's absolutely no wires or anything attached. You will literally just 
slip it on like so because the socket is designed for every person and there are muscle sensors both here in the arm and here and every time you are getting your hero arm you're basically you get you go to the lab and you get tested for your sensitivity because all of that is personalized as well because some people are stronger than the other but basically it's just the same muscles only two muscles that i'm using when i'm operating these hands even when i'm doing a pinch or a point or anything like that it's still these two muscles and they're the same muscles the only way i can describe it is the same two muscles that you would use just to open and close your hand organically because i still actually have those muscles i just don't have the end product which is the palm with the fingers that move at the end so they're all those muscle sensors that are being detected in the arm so if i squeeze my muscles the hand will close it's a cool noise as well and if i flex my muscles the hand will open then if you pay attention to this button on the back here if i flex again once the hand is already open it will turn green and flash and i also feel a vibration on the inside of the arm when that happens but you may have seen the thumb the thumbs moving around like that so that's basically me changing the grip modes and there are six grip modes in total there used to be four but that's an upgrade firstly we have this normal clothes which I would use to like hold a cup or a ball or anything like that. Then if you press the button, you have access to two more grip modes, still those same squeeze and flex muscles. If I squeeze now, it will be a pinch with two fingers like that. Flex, change the grip mode. I can do a peace sign. They call this the tripod grip mode at the lab, but I call it a peace sign really. And then if I press for the final time, I have access to the last two grip modes which are very much more precise can literally pick up the smallest bead it is this tiny little pinch and then you can also do a point like that so it's all using those same two muscles which makes it really really easy or the easiest it can be for a child or anybody who's trying to wear prosthetics for the first time to be able to actually operate them and do that successfully okay interesting thing thanks for that um one um yeah maybe bridge question um i mean for you human augmentation i mean that's basically the overall uh, topic here is for you for yourself personally essential to live like a, a regular life kind of uh, if i may say so um you know, there are many other kind of human augmentations like these chip implants. We already talked before about it, um, which may be used for all kinds of different things like as Reiner for unlocking doors or payments or whatever. From your personal understanding, do you think that these areas of human augmentation like these enhancements by implanting chips and so on are as important as the medical aspects like your arms or feet or whatever um, or is it more like a pure like scientific playground kind of thing yeah I mean well in general people just get in like certain chips because they feel like it I just think do what you want if you want to do that then sure go ahead it is a bit of a scientific playground i think it's definitely not as important as literally giving people their limbs back i think that like we can all agree on that but however i do think these type of implants and advancements of tech in like that kind of sense can definitely actually be really really helpful in my brain comms because people don't think about tasks like how difficult it is to like pick up a bag unzip a purse get the purse out get the card out of a certain slot doing that with bionic arms with a manual wrist and not being able to really feel anything of what you're doing that can be a bit of a hassle so to be honest i think i would thrive and other people who have bionic arms would absolutely thrive to have some kind of chip in their hand it's funny because i actually brought this up to the team the other day because i am 15 year old girl i love to go shopping with my friends pre-covid obviously and something that was a challenge sometimes is having to like get a card and get the cash out it's better now using a card and contactless rather than cash fumbling around with that as you can imagine but something i did bring up to the team and like the heads was the fact that i that kind of worded it to them sold, as in i, I could literally just like sell the tape my card to my palm and pay like that but 
so like that's kind of has the same effect as an implant but that's how I worded it to them because that's just what I was thinking I wasn't too aware of like implants and all that but I know I wanted to like some kind of wireless payment with my hand because that would just make my life so much easier but hearing that you actually have got a augmentation so that you can pay or like you can use it as keys that would benefit me personally and actually so many other people so I actually don't think it's that much of a scientific playground because at the end of the day I think it would benefit a lot of people's lives and make them a hell of a lot easier thanks for that Wojtek um how often did you pay with your hand already Every day uh, since I got the first implant uh, installed in my body. So it's been uh, a year since I got my first implant installed. So I believe that uh, I am very close to, let's say, 500 purchases already done with my implant. Okay. So basically that, that would be kind of the technology Tilly also, ma also mentioned would help her. Um, but I mean, just... I know these implanted chips for quite some time and um, the different use cases. And of course, one thing which quite often pops up, I mean, first of all, it popped up in my head, but also when I was talking with people, um, is the topics of security and privacy, clearly, because it is some very unique and sensitive information, either uh, when you unlock your door or when you do payments. Uh, it's some very sensitive information. What do you say to people uh, when they ask you about, yeah, what is about surveillance, privacy? Can you be tracked by maybe three-letter agencies or that kind of stuff? Or even just, can this data be stolen off from your chip or be uh, changed in whatever uh, meaning? Uh, what's your take on that? So first of all, let's start with talking about the whole NFC technology, how it works and what can be done and what cannot be done with the use of NFC technology. NFC stands for near field communication. So when it comes to tracking, the only option to track a person who has a chip or implant with NFC technology is simply get in a very close contact with this person and then you will actually realize that this person stands next to you. So uh, NFC technology has no capabilities of uh, storing uh, any outer data than in our case payment data and uh, does not support any outer system for processing uh, different information or uh, spying or tracking activity, tracking location. That's simply not how it works. NFC enables you only to establish a connection with a uh, active tag. In our case, in Wallet Morse case, it's it's payment terminal. So you, in order to activate or read the implant anyhow, uh, the only option for that is to get into the close contact with, uh, with a terminal. Uh, and of course, you do it only when you want to make a purchase. So uh, of course, uh, if you go to a store with a MasterCard or with a Visa card, uh, that, that's pretty much the same technology and pretty much the same situation. And of course, uh, people trust uh, this well-established companies such as Visa or MasterCard because uh, they are made only for this for those purposes to pay contactlessly, safely and uh, very conveniently in the stores. And that's exactly what WalletMore is doing. The only difference is that we are putting the chips, the NFC chips into the safe, uh, secure and biosafe implants that you place in your body. But when it comes to uh, the technology behind it, it's... Uh, the same as the well-established technology in uh, payment cards. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that. I, I think that that's quite interesting. I personally, um, I remember back then when Reiner got his uh, chip, uh, it was kind of a, a small wave within our group. So some people got a chip implanted, me not. Uh, I still have uh, several of them like originally packed. Um, but um, I didn't want to get them implanted also because of the very um, low functionality. Um, yeah, that was just, there was not, not much in for me. Uh, from your perspective, do you think there is, it's a real market, it's a big market, it's really 
that or can develop that huge that it's um, important to get into and um, yeah, that it works out? Yeah, of course. Uh, let's uh, uh, let's point this out that the whole uh, industry industry of implantable chips or generally smart implants has been has been out there for a couple of years now. People have been implanting uh, chips into their body uh, uh, for many years for uh, such purposes like opening doors, providing the business cards, or logging to computers, unlocking, uh, for example, even the weapons. So. Uh, so far, it was also the closed system, the closed loop system uh, that we used in this technology, which means that it was only one or a couple of devices linked to uh, one or a couple of devices, uh, which means that you, you had to create your own system and link your own detectors or terminals into the system to make it work with the NFC or RFID technology. When it comes to Wall of More and generally speaking, the uh, the trends that we are seeing right now, uh, we are getting into the uh, open loop systems, which means that with wallet more implants, you can pay basically everywhere, everywhere on a planet, in every payment terminal that accepts contactless payments. So you don't need to establish your own network of detectors and your own network of uh, any uh, machines and software or digital infrastructure because it's already there. And we, we were the first ones actually on the market to uh, to establish this uh, this pattern and simply to uh, popularize this uh, solution uh, and bring it to the masses. And payments is just the first step, again, the, the first step into this, this sphere and this domain. Uh, for now, already for already today, we have the technology to merge payments with the other solutions. So uh, imagine that uh, in the near future, uh, you could use one single implant, the same, even the same one uh, as uh, Reiner has, uh, to, for example, pay for the uh, coffee in the local cafe, uh, do proceed the check-in at any airport on the planet, then uh, open your door to the, let's say, one of the major uh, uh, major hotels from a from a global network, uh, and then, for example, uh, open your office uh, also in one of the major uh, co-working spaces companies. So, all these tech and also pay for the uh, transport in one of the cities. Uh, these technologies can be merged. Those are the things that we do every day, uh, a couple of times every day, uh, especially if you are an uh, active professional. Mm -hmm. uh, you use transport, you open doors, you, you pay every day. So you have multiple points that you can touch on. And uh, 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 consequently for us, we have multiple uh, things that we can provide solutions for. So uh, I definitely see it coming. And uh, again, if we look at the global trend and if we spot that there is a, a solution that uh, enables you to proceed any activity safely and more convenient, uh, without having to carry on uh, any bulky wallets or access cards or whatever, because you can squeeze it in one tiny implant, I I don't understand why it wouldn't happen. It's, it's just the way it is on the planet. As long as we have newer, better, safer, faster, more convenient, uh, safer technologies, they will emerge. And we we cannot do anything about it. We just need to adapt. And wallet more is a great example example of this adaptation and how the contactless payments can be bring to another level. Okay. Cool. Thanks for that. As we just got Reiner back, maybe he has some additional questions. I might if you're hearing me, are you? Yes. Yeah, it's oh, very good. Um, so yeah, I take a question from the chat actually. Um, and that is a question to Tilly um, from Nicholas Curran. How difficult is the task currently to tie your shoelaces with uh, these bionic arms? In all honesty, all honesty, avoid shoelaces. Like usually, I'll just like put it on, put my, like just slip my shoe into the slip my foot into the shoe without having to tie the shoelaces or untie them. That's just how it is. 
Um, yeah, I know some people have figured it out how, and some people do tie their shoelaces with these boner comps. It's entirely possible. I think the problem and the difficulty for me is the fact that I'm missing both and I'm using both bionic comps. There's no sense of touch. There's no sense of feeling. So honestly, for me, it is a lot more difficult, which is why my opinion is very, very valued by the company because I'm one of their few users who can give feedback on having to only rely on the bionic arm because other people would just use their organic limb for a lot of things. Um, so yeah, at the moment, I would just honestly avoid them, um, just not wear shoes that require laces very often. It is entirely possible. I've just got a unique case, I would say. But I have met um, Nike and people like that who are doing adaptive things. I did a like kind of a prosthetic fashion kind of awareness thing when I went to Washington, Washington DC and actually got to go into the White House where I met a bunch of these incredible people who were working on incredible things. And it's definitely something in the media, which I think is um, inclusive, inclusivity and diversity is becoming a bigger thing. And therefore, big brands are trying their best to cooperate with that. So I'm very, very happy that that's how, it, how it's going. But to answer your question, I do just avoid them. <laughs> okay. Um... Nicholas Curran had a second question, which is uh, to Wojtek and Marco, I would say. Um, what about a contract, contact tracing style approach? If thousands of people had NFC chips in them, could you track why are those degrees of separation? Say in Wojtek stands right next to Marco, stands right next to Wes, stands right next to Leo, stands right next to Tilly, stands right next to me. Could you somehow track it through? I think I know the answer, but uh, Wojtek. So the answer is no, because uh, when talking about NFC technology and establishing a connection between two tags, two items, you always have the passive item, which in our case is world more infant, and uh, the active tag, which is the terminal. And the way the data is processed is the, uh, the active tag, uh, which is terminal, which is uh, either linked to a source of power or has its own source of power, any sort of battery that powers this passive tag. And that's why the data from this passive tag can be read by the terminal and eventually the payment can be proceeded. So in a situation uh, as presented, uh, we are talking only about a group of people carrying passive tags around. So in the end of the day, there is no source of energy that can uh, that can make all these passive tags work. And in the end of the day, they were still uh, encrypted data, uh, a piece of uh, uh, transponders, uh, sorry, a group of transponders uh, with uh, sort of data written on them. But as long as there is no uh, external source of power, there is no possibility to read this data. So eventually uh, such a solution is not possible. And answering the next question that you pro that probably appears in your, uh, in your head right now, uh, no, it's not possible to manufacture an uh, active tag uh, that can act as an implant because active tag needs the energy and, of course, we cannot uh, implant a battery into our body. Interesting. The next question is from Beverly Gormley, who uh, says, I'm really interested to know who inserts the implants and how you address any problems with it if it breaks once it is in. So when it comes to wallet more implant, uh, they shouldn't break in any normal situation. And I would, I can even say that they don't break because we use the BioSafe biopolymer, uh, which is our uh, custom uh, uh, solution, custom material that uh, went through a battery of very demanding tests, and uh, it, it's not breaking down even if you have a magnetic resonance, if you have an uh, uh, a situation when you accidentally put your hand in any hot place and you simply burn your hand because it went through uh, a, a very high temperature test. And of course, it doesn't break if you punch someone with, with your hand when, or, or you simply punch anything with, with your hand uh, because this biopolymer is super safe and super strong. Even if you take a special hammer that is supposed to, for example, break the glass, in case of any emergencies in the buses, uh, with a very sharp uh, ending uh, on, on the top of the hammer, 
and you want to crack the implant, it will still uh, survive. Nothing would happen to that implant. And that's pretty much the magic of, of those implants. Of course, if we are talking about the uh, implants that are encapsulate, encapsulated in a glass fiber or generally uh, glass encapsulants, then of course the glass may, may, may break down, but it's only in case of the glass encapsulated implants. In our case, uh, it's impossible. Of course, you can take uh, you can take a very sharp device and simply cut your hand off. But at that time, your bigger concern is definitely the hand itself, not the implant. I can say I have a glass implant, as far as I know, and I had it for Marco. Help me, five years, six years, uh, maybe six years at least. And this is also not breaking. There's no way. Not that I tried, but I, uh, I'm clumsy. I hit my hand against things uh, all the time and nothing happened there yet. Uh, the other part of the question was uh, who would insert the implant? I can also reply to that. Usually it's, let's say, body modification artists like um, um, tattoo artists that are specialized on that, uh, that would insert such an implant um, under really highest uh, standards. Um, so at least that's how I got my implant. Yeah, uh, when it comes to our implants, uh, maybe let me show you the actual implant that we are talking about. It's uh, this one. If we look at the camera, it's both the, uh, the black square microchip and also the white antenna. And uh, I'm not sure if you see it, but around this white antenna, you see a transparent uh, case, which is this bio biopolymer that I'm talking about. It's also uh, uh, within the antenna itself. So uh, that's how it looks. Uh, it's uh, shorter than three centimeters, uh, and it has also a uh, seven millimeter uh, width. So uh, it's it's not super small as the one that Weiner has, but still, compared to the credit card and compared to general size of our hands, uh, it's super small because you, we, can, we can simply put it basically everywhere. There are uh, even people who put it directly in their fingers and that's our ultimate target, make it as small as possible to make it uh, available to install uh, actually in our fingertips. However, when it comes to this version, uh, yeah, it should be either the surgeon or uh, a, spe a specialist uh, from body modification or piercing because you eventually need to cut your skin and then place the implant manually in the in a special subdermal pocket. Uh, so, of course, we don't want anyone to hurt uh, himself or herself. So we definitely advise you to not do it at home and to visit a professional. Uh, sometimes uh, you can even ask a nurse if you have one within a family or friends uh, to assist you with this procedure, uh, but never try this by yourself at home. That is good advice indeed. Um, we are in theory out of time, but uh, maybe I can still throw in one question from the um, chat and one question that I had, if you're happy with that. Anyone? No, nobody seems to be running away. Um, a question from the chat, again to Wojtek. What if you touch, for example, a Van de Graaff generator or some other source of energy with your chipped hand? Uh, can you please repeat the question because I have a connection problem? No, sorry. Uh, what if you touch, for example, a Van de Graaff generator or some other source of energy with your chipped hand? I think the question is about does it react to external influences and would it heat up or would it be destroyed by anything? Uh, no, uh, at least no by any conventional methods and conventional uh, data transmission technologies because uh, NFC technology have certain protocols that uh, are used for communication within within the devices. So uh, if our implants and uh, eventually also payment terminals have a certain protocol, uh, it's like a language. You cannot, in, in theory, of course, you cannot talk to a person who speaks German in French. So that's, that's how it works here. The question rather is about physical. Um, so could you create, let's say, a magnetic field that would be strong enough to physically destroy it? 
Now, no, no, at least again in a conventional sphere, because we tested our implants for uh, several uh, forces, like external forces, and one of those those forces was uh, the magnetic implant. Uh, sorry, the the magnetic power. And uh, of course, if you think about the standard payment card, there is this magnetic slide uh, on the back of your card and it's linked with the whole integrated circuit of a card. So eventually, if you uh, if you go with this standard payment card to the, uh, uh, to the sphere when there's an external forces uh, that, are, uh, that are out there and that may, of course, destroy the, the payment card. However, if we take implant, it's only the NFC technology. There is no outer technology. There is no magnetic space that can be uh, that can be somehow interfered. Of course, if you use any sort of nuclear power or something uh, with a huge uh, huge amount and huge power, then maybe it may happen. But uh, talking about the real life problems and the real life situations that we can encounter, it's absolutely not possible to uh, break it or to hack it using any external data transfer mission technology or uh, any solution such as uh, for any magnetic power uh, or basically anything that we are encountering on a day on a daily basis. Super, thank you. I'm throwing a last question to Tilly. Tilly, I mean, your arm is basically a computer, isn't it? And so you could, in a way, have functions added. And you told us that you're talking to the developers on a regular basis, what you would li actually like to have. What would be like the killer feature that you would really want to add to it? Oh, tough one, but I actually know the exact answer. I've been saying it ever since I heard about the company, ever since I first spoke the word to them, I'm pretty sure it made it into the first sentence they ever heard from me. Um, I really, really want some kind of like personal assistant in the hand, um, you know, like, like how we have Siri or that Amazon one that I'm not gonna say so she doesn't start talking to me, but like that type of thing in the hand. So you could basically like talk to it and be like, I don't literally just talk to it. Um, when I say that, I want it to have quite a lot of, of a eccentric, very ambitious um, of a features inside of it. So like, ideally we want like a, blue, a bluetooth speaker and like a projector as well so i could like kind of tell the hand hey hand play some music hey hand project this film you know what i mean i just think that would be the coolest thing ever and it's definitely my my dream and when i first like when i completely turn the hand off and turn it back on it plays a little tune so in order to get closer to my pa dreams i recommended to the company i don't know if they'll go ahead with this but i recommended to the company that it kind of come on and instead of having a little tune it could say like hello or something and i feel like that will be closer to my personal assistant dreams but that's like really advanced technology and i think if you had that in your arm and you could literally speak to your hand like that that was definitely got to be got to be the coolest feature that I can imagine having. <laughs> yeah, that nice. sounds quite <laughs> quite interesting indeed. Um, has Rana disappeared already again? Um, I would say we're quite out of time. Uh, back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're back, you're back. Yes, so um, good. Yes, Marco, what you said was right. We are quite out of time. Um, so thank you both for joining us. Um, Tilly, Wojtek, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Marco, for hosting with me. Um, and uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. And uh, please continue commenting under this as soon as uh, this is live so we, can, we will reply. We will get uh, answers to other questions if you have such. Um, and don't forget to tune in uh, next month. We are streaming on the third Wednesday of every month. Um, and uh, it will be an interesting round with interesting people again next time. Um, and so this was our Unlocked um, in cooperation with Kaspersky Next today. Um, thank you, everybody, again. And um, have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you all.